Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start with some of your problems. I wanted to do one with you just to make sure you know what you're doing, that you're on the right track. What is nice about these limiting excess problems is we're not doing anything new. We're just taking all these pieces and again, combining them just a little bit more to be able to apply them to a slightly different situation. So what we've got is when we've got them correct, we know both reactants are needed in order for that reaction to go. Now, one of them is going to run out first. That substance that runs out first is what we call that limiting reactant. So let's take a look at number one from 9.5. Number one, when nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas react, gaseous ammonia, NH3, is produced. A says write a balanced equation for this reaction. Well, we are very well versed in doing this. We've got nitrogen gas. Nitrogen, N, is diatomic. Buddies up with itself. Two becomes stable. Nitrogen gas at room temperature plus Hydrogen gas, also diatomic, H2 gaseous at room temperature, to form, react to form ammonia, which is this NH3 molecule, also going to be a gas. Here are our parts to our equation. This is a senseless reaction, as we've got two parts adding together to make one final substance here. Uh, go back and look. We need to do a little balancing. We've got two nitrogens, one nitrogen, we'll multiply that guy by two. That gives us six hydrogens, we'll multiply our hydrogen by three. Oh, shoot, I gotta add myself. Part B, what type of reaction is this? Two parts marrying together, forming one substance. This is a synthesis reaction. The question now becomes, based upon the amount being used in part D, we are asked what is the limiting reaction. We know both of these react, but one of them is gonna run out first. The one that runs out first is gonna limit the reaction, it's gonna stop. So if we can figure out which one of these two makes the least amount of ammonia, we will find our limiting reactant. Well, and if we look, part D is actually asking specifically what mass of ammonia can we form, can be produced. Well, let's do two birds with one stone. If we take our 5.0 kilograms of hydrogen and find ammonia, and if we take our 25 kilograms of nitrogen and find ammonia, we will find the one that makes the least amount of ammonia gas, and that will be our limiting reactant. So, we're actually going to run two separate stoichiometry problems, both of them to solve for the grams of ammonia. I would suggest, if it was me, let's start by getting out of kilograms. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Kilo. We need to get to grams to use our mold train. Uh, looks like one, two, three hots to base. So for both of these, we're going to have one, two, three. 5.0 kilograms becomes 5,000 grams. 25 kilograms becomes 25,000 grams. All right. We have our two starting amounts. We're going to take our 5,000 grams of hydrogen, H2, and we're going to change those grams from grams of substance A all the way to grams of ammonia, NH3. Well, we've got grams on top. Our first step is our molar mass of substance A, in this case hydrogen. Look on the periodic table, 1.008 times 2, 2.016 grams for every one mole of hydrogen. Grams canceled. We're in the mole. We can go to our mole ratio. For hydrogen to ammonium, our ratio is 3 to 2. If our hydrogen's on top now, our 3 moles of hydrogen go on bottom in our mole ratio. Our substance we're trying to get into goes on top. Moving close, moles hydrogen cancel. We now are in moles of ammonia. We can now go from ammonia to grams. We need the molar mass of ammonia for this. One nitrogen plus three hydrogens gives us a molar mass of 17.034 grams per every one mole of ammonia. Moles go on bottom here to cancel. If we've done it right, the only left are our grams, what we're looking for. Multiply the bottom, multiply the bottom, top. Divide the two. When we do this, we should get for our hydrogen. Assuming all of the grams of hydrogen react, we should get with sig figs 28000 grams. 28,000 grams of ammonia. A lot of ammonia. Now this is assuming that all of the hydrogen is able to react. It may or may not be. It is dependent upon how much nitrogen we have. So we need to look to see how much ammonia gas we get if all of the nitrogen here reacts. Well, we had 25 
thousand grams of nitrogen, it's going to look pretty much identical, just different numbers. Molar mass for nitrogen going on bottom, 28.02 grams per every one mole of nitrogen. Grams canceled. We're into our mole ratio step. Mole ratio for nitrogen to ammonia for every one mole of nitrogen on bottom. We make two moles of ammonia. We're in moles of our new substance, but we want to get to grams to be able to compare our two amounts. We will use actually the same identical step from before. And for every one mole of ammonia gas, we've got 17.034 grams of ammonia. Check our units here. We are in grams for our NH3. When we multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and divide with significant figures, we get 30,000 grams of ammonia. So here is what we have just discovered. If all 5,000 grams of our hydrogen reacts, we can make 28,000 grams of ammonia. If all 25,000 grams of nitrogen reacts, it can make 30,000 grams of ammonia. The key is that we have to react them together. And what we will find is that as we put these two grams together, they react, they react, they react, they react, until we get to the point where we have made 28,000 grams of ammonia at this moment. Once we have made this much of our product, we are out. We've used all of the hydrogen we have. We are going to have extra of the nitrogen. We're not going to use it all because we're not going to be able to make 30,000 grams of ammonia. Before we get there, we run out of our hydrogen. What this means is that our limiting reactant, the boss in charge of this chemical reaction, is the hydrogen. And because it is a limiting reactant, we are only going to be able to produce from these two starting amounts exactly 28,000 grams of ammonia gas. Okay? Same steps. Grams, moles, moles, grams. Same steps as our stoichiometry from before. We're just applying it to two reactants simultaneously instead of one on its own. Let this be a guide as you start working through the rest of these problems for tomorrow. If you have questions, be sure to check with your neighbors and or you can always email.